Dr. Dean Raiden, it's been a minute or two. How are you, sir? How are things? I'm doing well, busy as usual. Wonderful. Yeah, that, that is true. You certainly are. You're, uh, you're up to mischief as usual, and uh, I'm very looking forward to talking to you about it. But uh, for people who don't know, uh, Dr. Raiden is the chief scientist of the, uh, at the Institute of Noetic Sciences. And uh, he, in a, in a funny way of timing these things, uh, we reconnected via email because of the Assigil A Day uh, 2024 project that I mentioned a few days ago. Uh, and Dean has, you know, Dean is cooking up something, I think, very interesting for people who are keen on the world of sigils and experimenting with psi effects uh, and so on. So, so lay it on us, sir. What, uh, what have you got coming up? Uh, so I take it we're going to look at the website in a minute. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, um, say, I will do that right now. So what I'll say is that uh, one of my main interests has been uh, the physics of consciousness. And as part of that study, I've been doing experiments using optical systems, like a double slit optical system. And the, the way that uh, we cast these experiments in the terms that physicists will be interested in is that we're looking at the quantum observer effect, in particular, something called the consciousness collapse interpretation of quantum mechanics. So this was a hot topic back when quantum mechanics began, because uh, quantum mechanics gives us a very good description of the physical world, but it has a peculiarity in it, which you don't find in classical physics, namely that when you look at a, a quanta, uh, objects at the quantum level, they seem to know that you're observing them, their behavior changes. So this is still one of the many interpretations of the foundations of quantum mechanics. And so the way that I've been studying it is by using an optical system and asking people to direct their attention towards the optical system to gain what's called which path information. And that means that you're, you're gaining essentially clairvoyant information about the behavior of photons. So if the photons know that, or you can somehow grab information from the photons, we have ways of measuring that they change, they change behavior. And that the change occurs in the interference of photons. So in a double sit system, it's pretty straightforward how to do that, but it's not that easy to do. So I got a grant to make an experiment where I, I make small interferometers and, and I made it in a little box and on this website, you'll be able to see pictures of it. And I have a description of what that's about. Yeah. And in the past, what we've usually done is recruit meditators to do this experiment. Because the experiment is all about focusing your mind. And so meditators have some practice with that. In this experiment, I'm also going to use meditators, but I'm expanding the participant pool specifically to magicians. Uh, I use sigil both as an acronym for the experiment. And yeah, there's a picture of the optical yeah. system. I'm, I'm using sigil uh, because some people doing this will use sigils as part of their practice, but almost any magical tradition that their practice would be viable. And the reason I'm doing this is because while meditators are really good at focusing their mind, usually the intent of the focus is on the inside, like becoming inner, inner calm. Whereas this experiment, like many of the others we've done, it's all about the outside. It's focus your attention somewhere outside. And that's what a, logic, a lot of magical practices do. So the ideal participant in this experiment would be a person who practices magical methods, who also happens to be a meditator, because then they'll both have the inside and the outside. They'll know how to use intention. They'll know how to use all of the facets of the experiment that would make this experiment successful. And if it is successful, that would be quite interesting because it would inform something about basic physics that the mainstream is interested in. It would also show the magic can do something in a yeah. way which generally is not shown with magic because this is a controlled experiment. So the downside on this is normally when you, you do a magical effort, there's very high motivation, enormous amount of preparation. It's like a one shot to the thing that you want. Well, you can use that same technique for this, except that the, the technique of the experiment requires that for 30 seconds, you're totally in the, the object, which is an optical system. And then for 30 seconds, you withdraw your attention. 
and then you put it back in for 30 seconds. So you're in and out, 30 seconds in and out. So that has to be done pretty strictly to see a differential effect, which is required by the nature of the, of the protocol. So some people like, like meditators will sometimes say, I can't do that. Like I can focus for 20 or 30 minutes at a time, but I can't withdraw my attention. So I say, that's okay. Focused attention towards that thing and then just shift it a little bit. So you're not focused at that anymore. You're, you're focused at this thing, whatever that happens to be. So you can maintain very tight focus, except for a little tweak away from the optical system and then just bring it back. So most people can do that. So that's, that's the nature of the experiment. So I'm in the process now of recruiting people. I have almost 300 so far. I want to get 500. And then from there, we select uh, 200 who will take the next step, uh, which, which are performance tests. They're looking at, at how well you can focus your attention using standardized methods. They're not easy. They're short, but they're not easy to do. Uh, from there, we'll select 100 to do one-on-one uh, -on -one Zoom interviews using a structured interview method. Either I'll do it or one of our assistants will do it. And from there, we'll choose 50 who seem to be the best. And the best in this case is going to be our subjective opinion based on all of the steps that we went through. One of the other reasons for doing multiple step and uh, selection is we want people who are really going to do this seriously. Yeah. Not simply, oh, this sounds like fun. I think I'll try it because we've gone to an enormous amount of expense to make these optical systems. We'll mail it to you. You'll use your own computers and everything. So it, it require more than simply interest. Uh, a, a real sincere motivation to actually do this for real. And then as payment afterwards, you get a hundred dollars and there'll be a drawing for an iPad. And if you wish, you can keep the optical system and play with it yourself. Yeah, I love it. And I understand exactly what you mean about making sure uh, people are serious with it. I think that's what interests me. I mean, it's a very cool and as is usual with you, Dean, a very well designed experiment, but, uh, that's kind of different, and I like it. It's the the um, uh, the winnowing out of the. I'm mildly interested in, in this to like. No, I'm going to take this very seriously, and we'll see what <laughs> see how much more that moves the needle. I think that's quite an exciting uh, exciting prospect. Yeah, this will also. We also want to find people who might be very experienced magicians, and I've spoken to a number uh, who don't want to do it because it's the, the requirements of a controlled experiment are incompatible with their practice. And I completely understand that. So we're, we're looking for special magicians who think it would be cool and interesting and really important to actually put their practice to test. See, well, does it work in this condition? Well, I mean, we don't know the answer yet. That's why we're doing an experiment. We, you don't need to do an experiment if you already know the answer. So we'll see what happens. And that's part of the fun of it too. Absolutely. And for people who might be a bit squeamish about that listening and watching, uh, the experiment is something very specific and I guess, cosmically speaking, very small. Uh, it, it says something about uh, a, a human intention, a human intentionality's capacity to change things like photons that we can measure. The next step up from that of like, uh, I don't know, achieving one's dream life, it doesn't say as much about it <laughs> as you might think. So don't freak out uh, at the prospect of it. I think this is really fun. I, and I love, there's something delightful about, um, I'll bring it back. There's something delightful about using, uh, <laughs> using fun technology in the home to, to measure this. It's, it's got a very yeah. visible kind of energy. I think this is a great idea. Yeah, and it is, the, as you can see on the board there, there are three very sensitive uh, light sensors. And in the blue box, there is a laser. So that's the optical components. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff on there. And the reason why I have all this other stuff is because uh, you will have the box where you are. You'll have your computer and just plug it in, and now you're doing the experiment. So I need to be able to characterize the environment really precisely. Because, yeah. for example, if you took a hairdryer, and you aimed it at it every time you're supposed to focus, you aimed a hairdryer and heated it up a little bit, yeah, that would course. change the optics. Yeah. So there would be ways of faking it with, with this apparatus since we have no control over what you're doing with it. But through these sensors, and I get data from all of the sensors all the time, uh, I'll, I'll know a lot about what's going on in your environment. So I'll be able to exclude 
any sessions or even pieces of sessions where it looks like somebody was monkeying with the system. Very and, cool. and also the data is encrypted. So there's very, there's very little that a, a person could do that I won't be able to detect. That unfortunately will become a challenge to some people and they'll don't try to figure out a way of getting around it. And that's fine too, you know, it's part of the experiment. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll have a way of detecting whether the, the system is quiescent. So it'll have to be in a quiet room and not a whole bunch of vibra vibration and things like that. Uh, no magnets nearby and, and that kind of data I'll be able to use. Amazing. This is going to be really cool. So for people who are, who are keen to know more, I'm just going to jump back to the main tab there. It's magictest.com, magic with a K, uh, magictest.com to find out more. Uh, and where, uh, wh when do we start? What's the, what's the closing if we're looking for a few extra hundred people uh, through the door for round one? I, I am currently getting... It depends a lot on, on how wide I'm broadcasting this, but I'm getting around 20 people a day and I have around 290, something like that at the That's moment. Right. So with, so I imagine a couple of weeks, if yes, I'm lucky, sweet. I'll end up with 500. So there's, awesome. there's still plenty of time. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, I, I think this is really fun. Uh, good luck with this. Uh, we will certainly uh, blast this out. Uh, to so this is really like I'm just thinking from the membership's perspective that obviously the audience is a bit wider, but the membership has experience in and training in meditation and intention and obviously sigils. So people listening to uh, and watching Perfect. this, it will be uh, it'll be right up your alley. So yeah, good luck with it. This is really fun. I'm I'm I'll be excited to see and hear how this goes, sir. So we will have. We, I, I should have, if the, everything's going according to my plan, uh, we'll probably have most or all of the data in March. Oh, amazing. So I, need just, I need to mail it to everybody. Uh, each person will have a month to provide mm -hmm. uh, 10 or 12 sessions worth of data. So each one's a half an hour. Uh, probably not more than one session per day um, because you can get burnt out on this sort of stuff. And then uh, I, I'll have a preset, a pre-registered uh, analytical plan. So I'll, I'll be able to do lots of exploratory work as well. But the preset plan will basically say from the get-go, this is what we're going to do. So, so I'll separate planned versus experimental um, analyses. And I also am working with a guy who's going to use um, machine learning, uh, deep learning methods, because the amount of data that comes out of this thing is huge. There's a huge amount of data, lots of sensor data. And so the main thing of interest is what's happening in the optical system. But I pretty I strongly suspect that there will be other things going on too. So we have magnetic radiometers and a bunch of other sensors that are looking for very subtle changes in what I could say are normal forces. Well, photons are normal forces too. But you know, the, each one of these is looking at a slightly different way of detecting whether there's some kind of an influence. So when you use machine learning, you can look at all of it at the same time. So that's, I'll be using that. Too. Amazing. Oh, very cool. Well, uh, yeah, I, good luck. This, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be great. Uh, thank you so much for jumping on this call and sharing the material with people. And again, if you're listening to this or watching it, it's magic test with a K um, I C K test.com. Uh, wonderful stuff, sir. Uh, really, really, really good. Uh, really exciting to see. Thank you.